Okay. All right, this is a movie review. I need to break it up. You know, I've been on a grind as of recent. And uh, I'm gonna break it up with a review of Shazam Fury of the Gods. All right, I enjoyed the first movie immensely. Okay, it was a breath of fresh air from what we've been getting for the last uh, 15 years or so. And, you know, I was looking forward to this movie and whatnot, especially after I saw that they had upgraded the costumes, you know? One of the things that I was worried about was like identity politics creeping into this thing. And also the fact that the villains in this movie were three women, uh, you know, past the wall, well, you know, two past the wall and one, uh, you know, younger actress and whatnot. And then they had given away the ghost with the youngest, younger actress. But after watching the movie, it really didn't make a difference. This was paint by the numbers filmmaker. Okay. But you know, really the crew, the crew was the same crew from the first movie for more or less and shit. And the movie just suffers. It is every bit the sophomore film of, you know, what you would think would be a trilogy and everything. You know, logically speaking, the sequel to Shazam should have featured the title character facing off against the Dwayne Johnson's uh, Black Adam. That was the only logical thing you could have done. But they went the, they went the Holly Weird route. And they had him face off against three women, the, the the eldest of which is, you know, chronologically nearing her 80s if she isn't there now. She's a great actress, okay? Legendary actress. I've enjoyed her since I was a kid or not. It was just funny seeing her in this role playing like, a, I guess, an aged goddess, you know, a witch or something. And I remember when I was a kid, I enjoyed her as Morgana Le Fay in the uh, classic movie Excalibur okay Helen Mirren knows what to do with I think she just phoned this one in and it's you know her given her training and everything and her decades of experience that was more than enough for this uh, shitty script All right everyone's back you know I got upgraded costumes and everything but they couldn't get away from identity politics okay All right they, they try to be subtle about it but the ways in which they choose to insert the propaganda is uh disturbing you know for something that's packaged uh somewhat of a family film with an edge and it's just a lot of it, the drama is just like there doesn't make any goddamn sense okay it doesn't make any sense and whatnot they had their powers to just change from scene to scene and whatnot in the original movie uh the the title character shared this power with his siblings and each of them got one aspect of his power and whatnot now they all just the same you know, but he's like the template, so he's a little bit tougher than them, I guess. You know, just a shitty movie. It's a shitty movie and whatnot. I want to get into uh, my own version of identity politics as a straight black man. This movie is not for you. Okay. Denji Hanasu returns as the wizard Shazam. And he's he spends a lot of time looking helpless. He's locked away behind a cage. Uh, you know, barely able to have any sense of agency other than the send the SOS tool. Uh, apparently, you know, what is a, a, a preteen or somebody barely into his teens. Who is also that the title character of Shazam was actually called Captain Marvel, but they can't use that name for obvious reasons. Uh, the title character is presented as an idiot. Okay. Feminism 101. Make the man an idiot. And, you know, anybody else is like, uh, you know, past you know, past their prime and withering away. That's what we see in all the feminist productions. Okay, everything is driven by feminists. They they go for the long hanging fruit. They make younger men like uh, knuckle draggers, mouth breathers, and they make elder older men that should be at the height of their abilities. You know, like kind of like the Luke Skywalker thing. They make them embittered old men that's uh, basically uh, impotent on all levels and shit, leading leaving the, the pathway open for a female character to step up. Not so much with uh, Shazam, Fury of the Gods here, but as a, as a collective, uh, they are all uh, presented as morons and shit, you know? In each and every way, they're all self-absorbed and they don't barely know how to come together and they have these issues that they supposedly worked out in the first film, but they're back again. And Billy's just an idiot. Oh, Billy's like, when, when, okay, Shazam is a kid. He's like, you know, a young kid when he, says that magic word, the title character's name, he becomes an adult version of himself, just like a knockoff of Superman. Okay, they played this up to great effect in the first movie. But in this movie, 
uh, when he turns into Shazam, he behaves like, you know, uh, a lighter version of Peter Griffin. He's just an idiot. Okay? He's an idiot. And they just do, it's just so, so messy. The movie's so messy, it looks like it was made back in the, the you know, I hate to say the 90s because there was some good stuff there, but it looks like an old school superhero movie and shit. I wouldn't mind that so much if the script wasn't bad and it wasn't for identity politics. One of the siblings is, they, they, Heavily, they hit you over the head with like a, a mallet, you no know, carnival mallet and shit of identity politics. They have one, one of the siblings is uh, hinted at being uh, gay, all right? And they pick a minority as well. It's not a black person. No, it's a little fat kid, you know. They, they, the way in which they insinuate that he is a member of the LGBTQ plus IA community is that they, they show him looking at, uh, he's watching sports, sports games, watch like baseball games. And then he has like a magazine that they keep showing him looking at. And then they cut and it's like a muscle man a magazine or something, some kind of athlete on the cover of it, you know, in a, in a certain pose. And then uh, at one point during that, the kid gets up and goes into another room. You don't, you're left to just have a question mark over your head about what he's going to do in there. It's fucking ridiculous. You know, the main character... Uh, is pretty much asexual, you know, Billy Batson, you know, in this human form. Uh, he's just about like, uh, it'll be a kind of a, a toxic family member. You know, he, he wants everybody to do things together and he's just worried about, you know, what his future is and he doesn't have any ideas what he wants to do with his life, but everybody else has, you know, it's not, doesn't have those issues. And the parents somehow remain tragically clueless. It just doesn't make any sense. I thought in this movie that they would rectify that by having the parents receive a portion of his powers too. And that didn't happen. And, you know, getting back to, you know, my version of identity politics, you know, as a straight black man, I felt like slap in the face, right? Slap in the face with Denji Hanasu and shit, okay? Not only did they show him in a weakened state and give some contrived version for his return, they had him um, astral project into uh, the title character, the kids, he astral projected himself into uh, the kid's, uh, well, his wet dream, okay? And in this wet dream, you know, fuck spoilers. The movie bombed already at the time of this recording, but he astral projects into the kid's dream, and his head is on the top of the head of a character from the DCEU, a female character that you will know who's played by Gail Gadot. All right, they put the black man's head on Gail Gadot. Okay, with long hair and everything. And he's yelling at B Billy, but he has a, a Gil Gadot's body. And, you know, that's just her. It's a body double and he just put his head on there. You know, it's fucking ridiculous. And then he doesn't do shit. He's the guy that, that gave the kid his powers and shit. Once he's out of the situation that, he, you know, earlier in the film, he's useless other than giving exposition when needed. And he stands back. He plays the background in the frame Shazam. That's his fucking name. Okay, the kids say his name to transform into knockoffs of the Justice League and shit, okay? And it's just bullshit, you know? I'm really upset about that. Later in the film, he gets a makeover. And he looks like... He looks like Shawn Michaels. I actually met that guy before, okay? He looks like the porn star, the, the sexually amb ambiguous, the sexually fluid porn star, Shawn Michaels. And he shows up and he's wearing these fucked up clothes. It reminded me of the same, almost the same clothes they put on Will Smith in the first Suicide Squad movie when they had him wearing like a, you know, like a purple jacket and a big pimp hat and shit. They put the same shit on Denji Hanasu and shit. It's fucking racist, man. And he had like a, they, he cut off his beard and his dreadlocks, his, you know, his, his masterful dreadlocks and everything. He shaved his head and then he had a little white goatee and he had a big brim hat on and a, like, he had some pimp clothes on. And he came, he came back to, you know, to, you know, stick his head in the window. Or stick his head in their, in their home. And it looked like, like okay, what's the deal? He, he, was he going to Pride? Is he going to Pride next and shit? Or is he stopping off to pick up Zaya Wade and give her some powers with a stick? You know? I don't give a fuck. I'm tired of identity politics in, the, in a movie and shit. You know, there's no good reason for that shit other than there's an aggressive push agenda that, you know, you have to fight back. Okay? You have to, you know, this movie is a bomb. Okay, people are not gonna giving their money to this fucking film. And for good reason, it stinks. All right, it's fucking stinks and shit. It's a waste of money and resources. Makes me sick and it makes me sad at the same time because I love the first one so much. 
All right, it was so fucking real and it was goofy and it was a throwback and shit and it was under the New Line Cinema banner and shit. And I really liked it and shit, but I hate this fucking movie. It suffers. It's like the director said, you know, well, fuck it. Let's just phone this shit in because James Gunn is here to, to wipe the board clean, to clean the whiteboard. And we don't know where we're going to end up. Fuck it. Okay. And I'm just tired. I'm, I'm, the name of my channel is The Geek Underground to, you know, get a fucking clue and shit. It's just like, damn, you can't even get no fucking entertainment in this Orwellian society. And even in that goddamn book written by George Orwell, 1984, the proletariats, you know, if anybody's ever read that book, uh, they call black people and, you know, lower tier minorities proletariats and shit. The, the uh, totalitarian government made sure that they were well and truly entertained. And it's in a real life version of this Orwellian society that we live in today, this off kilter and everything is retarded. You know, it's extremes. Everything's painted in extremes. In this real world, they have lost the art of filmmaking and shit. I can't believe it. The stewards of that craft, that art and shit have failed for all time to come and shit. As we continually get, a, you know, a product and shit. It's like going to the lunch is going to cafeteria in grade school the shitty cafeteria and getting a shitty pizza on a square piece of bread you know that's what it is that's what this fucking movie is it's the trash movie it's a waste of effort it's a waste of talent it's a waste of concept it's a waste of ideas okay it's a waste i hate seeing good money thrown away and set on fire but that's all they give us and whatnot and it's up to you you know, if you want to be a mouth breather, you can go sit in the theater, eat your fucking part, popcorn and force yourself to laugh at, at the shitty jokes and, you know, the bad CGI and go, woo, like this shit. All right. I have a, I have two boys. One's an adult. He's on doing his thing. But I have a younger kid. OK. And my younger son is not even interested in this shit a little bit. OK. Now, I'm the geek underground and shit. OK. I grew up in this shit. I get steeped in this shit, wrapped in flag in this fucking geek culture and shit before a lot of bunch of assholes came along and co-opted and shit and turned it into an homogenized business and shit. All right, and I'm goddamn glad that my son is not into this shit. Okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna take my kid out and we're gonna go to the park and shit. And th you know, maybe I'll get him to be interested in throwing, throwing a ball around or something. You know, if he can put down the switch, and it's all good. Okay, it's all good. Shazam Fury of the Gods gets no fucking stars.